Tonight we'll be having our 34th lesson in the Epistle to the Ephesians. We'll be in the third chapter, verses 12 and 13. Now in Christ, God has purposed something that pertains to men. But it is transcendent in its nature. That is to say, if you think like a man, you'll never see it. Salvation, one of the big reasons for salvation isn't just to get you out of trouble or to free you from sin or to get you out of the devil's grasp or to liberate you from the world or to free you from enslavement to sin. That's that happens. Amen. But that really is not what it's all about. Amen. That's to get you ready for what it's all about. Amen. That's to say you cannot, I want to underscore this because Satan will try and convince you otherwise. You cannot have what God gives till you get out of where God delivers people. Amen. That's the way it is. I'm ashamed to say this, but not many people will tell you this. This is not fashionable to say this. It's fashionable to preach Jesus and to preach salvation as God coming where you are. And that's not right. God did come where we are in Christ. Make, make no mistake about this. But what this is about is you going where he is. That's what this is all about. So it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. <laughs> them that love him. Love him. God has some things for people that don't love him, but we don't, you don't want that. I have since seen, so in all this, with all the scope of vision and with microscopes and telescopes and all the rest of scopes, nobody's ever seen. We haven't thought about seeing what God has prepared for them that love him. And even it has never entered into the heart of man. I mean, man can't take this up, can't imagine it. Man has uh, fairy tales for children, you know, and other kind of fictitious fiction for adults and all this, where they try and paint scenarios that people wish would happen. But, you, but nobody's been able to do this with what God has. You can't, you can't uh, contrive something, no matter how good it is. So no man is, eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, and it has never entered into the heart of man the things. It doesn't say the greatness of the things. It just says the things. Uh -huh. yeah. Just at the bottom level, they have it. Having what God's prepared for them that love him. They're ready. Mm -hmm. They're prepared. God doesn't cook the meal after you get there. Amen. Now this statement of Paul is a kind of summary of almost an identical statement that Isaiah made. In Isaiah 64, 4, Since the beginning of the world, men have never heard nor perceived by the ear, neither with the eye seen, O God, beside thee, as you're the only one seen it, what he hath prepared for them that wait for him. So Isaiah said it. And is they're anxious for what God's going to do next. <laughs> Our little children, they get anxious for the Christmas time, you know, or whatever. And adults, they're anxious when they get to see the family again. There's things, things that people can be anxious for, look forward to. How about looking forward to what God's got? How about that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, even with that revelation Isaiah gave, he didn't have any idea either uh -huh. about what God was going to give. Not an adequate idea is what I'm saying. Didn't have. 
Even after hearing John the Baptist and Jesus himself, nobody still, nobody still saw it. <laughs> the people were so weak, so uninformed, so ignorant, that the very people who heard Jesus, healed by Jesus, fed by Jesus, taught by Jesus, gave their vote to kill him. Yeah. That's how much man knows about God. This was a cultured people, the only divinely cultured people in the history of the world. God has never cultured any other physical nation of people. Israel's it. They didn't see it either. Yes. Now here Paul's telling you, he's telling you what it is. Now it's been opened up now. Yeah. Why? Until sin, all of it, uh -huh. was taken away, laid on Christ, judged by God, and taken away, this thing could not be opened up. Amen. Yep. And only those who know their sins are gone will see it now. Because sin is like a gigantic blockade that stands between man and the things God has prepared for them that love him. Now, the men knew a lot about God, comparatively speaking to, say, our generation. There is no question that God could work like miracles. In the history of the world, there's never been miracles that on the scale of what God did in Moses' time. Never, they never, to this day, there's never been anything remotely like it on an outward scale to what he did. The ten plagues on Egypt, where has anything like this ever occurred? And purposely didn't touch any of the Israelites who were in the same country. Or passing through a Red Sea, who's ever done that? Or receive bread from heaven for 40 years. Whoever did that. Or whoever drank rivers of water that come out of a rock. See, no one's ever seen anything like that. They, they, some of their dead were raised. Some of their prophets were fed miraculously by birds, ravens, <laughs> scavengers. Fed what his prophets. See, what I'm saying is people became accustomed to God can do things nobody else can do. They knew about this. There were healings. They, they, a young boy fought a giant and defeated him. Not with a gun, uh -huh. with a sling and a stone. A stone, not stones, a stone. Uh -huh. There was only one little chink in Goliath's armor. He is covered from head to toe except this little spot in his forehead. You got to be pretty good at the sling to hit that. David did. So I'm showing you that if you talk about great things being done, peep, <laughs> there have been people that had seen God do great, great things. Make no mistake about it. But when it comes to knowing what God has prepared for them to love him, everybody was as dumb as an ox. They just, they just didn't know. Why? Because God didn't tell it. This is so great, if God doesn't tell it, nobody's ever going to know it. Amen. In fact, there's evidence that even in heaven it wasn't known, because angels still desire to look into it. So it's been, it's so successful what God, this is already cast in stone now, brethren. Mm -hmm. God has already prepared certain things for them that love him. Amen. But they are on such a grand scale, you can't, you can't imagine what it is. He just like introduces you to it with some statements here and there. Of course, we're going to have some, some tonight. Now, here's the text. Ephesians 3, 12 and 13. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, it's in view of this. I desire that you faint not in my tribulation for you, which is your glory. That doesn't, that doesn't sound like it fits in, does it? <laughs> but it does. It fits in. The kingdom of God has a logic of his own. 
as a logic of his own. God's thoughts are different than man's thoughts. He doesn't think so. He'll say things that don't make sense to earthly minds, like this what we just read there. <laughs> but it makes perfect sense. Now let's look at this text. In, in whom? In who? That's in Christ. It's the preceding words, the 11th. 11th verse, in Christ our Lord. That's the whom. Amen. Now the concept of being in somebody. See that, Allah didn't teach that. Yeah. Buddha didn't teach that. The Shintoists didn't teach that. The American Indian didn't teach that. Somebody being in somebody else. But the closest thing you can come to that is an infant in its mother's womb. All right, that's that's a pretty close parallel. It's not identical, but it's a a, a real person in another real person. That's <laughs> quite a thought, isn't it? Now there is a sense, of course, in which we're said to be with Christ. Or like alongside, like an associate. We, we are said to be with Christ. That's, we are dead with Christ. We have been raised with Christ. We, our life is hid with Christ in God. But this is different than in Christ. But saying with Christ, that's the means by which you get everything from God. You've got to be in association with Christ to get anything from God. The only thing accepting is like rain and sun. That he gives to the unjust and the just alike. But you've got to be with, you can be identified with, is to be the idea. But that's not what our text is, is talking about. Spiritual life is birthed when we're baptized into Christ. That's Romans 6, 3 and Galatians 3, 27. We're not baptized into a with Christ. We're baptized into Christ. Amen. See, well, that's just a, isn't that just a figure of speech? Well, <laughs> no, it's not just a figure of speech. Amen. It's a reality. God makes it possible in God for God to make two people one spirit. Just like in marriage, just two people become one flesh. Even then, that's not as close as the union we're talking about here. In, in Christ, the association is so close that the scriptures say, Ephesians 5.30, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So that's just to, just to show you how... <laughs> Tightly knit this is. In 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says we're one spirit. How's that? That's the closest of all unions. Amen. One spirit. Now we're we're going to comment here on being in Christ. Ordinarily, when we speak of something being in Christ, it's the benefits that are in him that are accentuated. Yeah. Normally, that's that's how we view this. It's how scripture views it. Normally, you're in Christ, and that accents the benefits that are in Christ that become that become yours. So we talk about redemption in Christ. How we talk about being sanctified in Christ, see. Or liberty in Christ, Galatians 5.1. In Christ, they're normally accenting what we have in Christ. But now we read of a body of people, a body of people that are in Christ. That's a big, big concept here. A body of people in Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in 
Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, all things become new. Now, a person who has not heard the word of God about being in Christ will not be able to glean much from what is, is said now in this, our text. You've got to at least be familiar with that kind of kind of language. Most of the time people talk about being in Christ are actually the group I come out of. They were talking about what you did Amen. to get into Christ. They weren't really talking about being in Christ. That's not, we didn't talk about that. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. I've read their books and went to their colleges and talked to their professors and read their authorities. They aren't talking about being in Christ. They're talking about what you do to get into Christ. Yeah. Now, Paul's talking about in Christ. He's talking about being in him. A parable from John 15. Parabolic language of the yes. vine and the branches. Yes. This is an exposition. That's right. Of that. Amen. And even then the fruit was the point. Mm -hmm. Even then the fruit was the point. But he's going, but it is. You have to be in Christ to bear, bear fruit. So to this point, Paul has labored to bring the people to a place where they can gain the advantage by his words. Paul's not going to draw us a picture, show us a movie, or give us a video and tell us the eye gate is, takes in more than the ear gate, and that's just a bunch of hogwash. That's all that is. That's not even true. <coughs> Your eye, you know, if you can just paint it for them, they'll see it clearer. This is nothing but a lie. In Christ. Now, if you're talking about biology or something like that, maybe this is the case. But the ear gate, that's the most potent gate in the kingdom of God. They that hear will live. Amen. Not they that see, they that hear will live. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, not by seeing. Amen. So he's going to tell us something. Body of people is in, in Christ. Actually, you really don't see until you believe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> believe it is seeing. Yeah. 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 yeah, the world says seeing is believing. We don't know. Believing is seeing. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. we know this. Is, you can see him who's invisible. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, if you can't hear, your ear is covered over. Just it hasn't been circumcised. Has it been circumcised? And therefore, you're off balance. That's and, I mean, this happens with the physical body. <laughs> that's I right. mean, I mean, that's if right. You have, have, like, if, if you have a cold, you're going to be. You're not going to be true. You're going to yeah. be, in some sense, off balance. You're that's not going to be 100. Right. But <laughs> Just as you can't hear with an uncircumcised eye, I has you know, no, no, uncircumcised ear. The ear has to be circumcised so you can hear. Therefore, yeah. you can get your balance. Yeah, that's, now, right. on, that's that's why it's called a narrow way, so you can go from point A to point B and not be distracted, mm -hmm. but keep on that narrow way. That's right. Amen. Amen. Blessed truths. <laughs> now he's a. Paul has already told the Ephesians some rather critical things that need to be known. He's told them that uh, they were chosen from the foundation of the world. So he says, it's already way up here. Way, <laughs> he's way up here out of human logic now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Chosen before the foundation. what he said. Yeah. Chosen in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world. He said, God predestinated you to be adopted. See, that's, that language is outside of human logic. It, and men have trouble with it. Well, what did, does that mean God picks out people? That, does God mean, well, let's ask the question. Did God really pick out Elijah? Did God really pick out Peter, James, and John? It's dumb. It's foolish to talk like this. All through the Bible, God's picked people out. Who picked out Noah? All through scriptures this way. So anyone that knows the Bible doesn't have trouble. The only trouble is they might want them. That's that. Now that, <laughs> that's what you want to know. And he gives you how to know how you can know that. Amen. Whether you're one. So I'm showing you here that he's, he, when he talks about salvation, he talks about it in such a way as you're looking up. You're saying, whoa, this is, this is something out of the domain. This isn't like we learn in school. I mean, this is just not like that. The schools of men. It's not like that. Men's learning is on a different level. It's a different kind of learning. In the world, learning is from the bottom up. Every science, every kind of regimented learning 
Whether it's elementary or high school or college or specialist, you learn from the bottom up. You start with the rudiments, the ABCs, and you come up. But in the kingdom of God, you learn from the top down. You learn the big stuff first, then the details later. So if you try and make Christians by talking to them like they're babies, whatever you end up with is not going to be Christian. You're going to start talking to them about the big things, what God did, what God provided, what God said. Seems simple to me now, but I remember when as a young man that first broke through to me that learning in the kingdom of God is on a different basis. So when Paul's teaching the people, it'll sound like he's talking over their head. <laughs> but what he's doing, he's talking about the foundational things are on the top. Here. In the kingdom of God, the sunrise does come from on high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. Not from down below. Amen. <laughs> Uh -huh. Hey, but he announced to them, uh, "We've been sealed with the Holy Spirit." See, now that's that's something that's beyond. Mm -hmm. Even even Christian people have a hard time comprehending that and the fullness of it. Sealed by the Holy Spirit, sealed like a notary seal, that, that kind of seal. Yeah. Not seal like like the envelope seal. It's a seal like a note, like a stamp. Uh -huh. You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's how angels and everybody in heaven knows that you belong to God. Yeah. Amen. Got the stamp on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Phew, that's good to think about, isn't it? <laughs> you can't say, have you noticed the Holy Spirit on me? No, we can't see it. We can see evidence or fruit, but we can't see the seal, but... God does. Yes. And uh, we gather the angels do too because they're going to gather up all the sealed people in the end so they got to know who they are. Yeah, well, Lord, there are ministers to those <laughs> who shall be heirs That's so they right. got to know which one's the minister. <laughs> and he announced that they'd been made alive by God in the Ephesians second chapter. See, he, taught, he, he laid the groundwork for this by telling them what God had done, what God had done, what God had done, what God had done. Now he gets down to this in, in, in whom, in Christ. We can have, no, 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 that's not, that's not how I say it. In whom we have. Now it's possible to have this and not know it. That's why he's saying this. In whom we have. You, God, when you come into Christ, you received a lot more than you dare to think. Your rest of your life, you'll be you're opening up to see it more. It's like your peripheral vision has been, whoa, well, look at all, whoa, look here what I got. I got it when I come in. Yeah. When I was born again, I got it. Amen. But I wasn't able to handle it yet. That's the beauty of perfecting. Perfecting holiness. Yes. Yeah. Is that as you begin to see these things, yeah. you your your inner man grows and your, your old man dwindles that's yeah. right amen and you can't you can't really get hold of them as you say yeah. you can see them so that's what what he does when he puts you into christ he puts you where everything is but you you have to develop the capacity to a hold, hold of all these things and that's what uh, that's what he's doing here we have bones with confidence I'm uh, I'm confounded by this, and it, it grows on me more and more. How most professing Christians spend more time praying for things that they have no guarantee about, and very little time praying about things they have a guarantee about. This is very uh, disconcerting to me. And we've made some progress here, but most churches never do pray for anything but something that's happening on earth already. As we all to ever, it's all they ever pray for. But now we've got boldness and access with confidence. It's got to be because this is what's required to appropriate all of this multitude of things that God has prepared for them that love him. But you've got to come. He's not going to throw them to you like they do at the 
rest under the throw and roll. They lob a roll through the air at Lambert's Cafe. That's not how God works. He doesn't throw it to you. you got to come up to the throne and get it. We're talking about the throne of God, so it takes boldness. To <laughs> you just don't stroll into the presence of God. You, you have to have boldness, and then you have to have access. God's got to welcome you. You remember Esther? It's her own husband was on the throne, but he didn't hold out the scepter. She wasn't going to be his wife any longer. She'd be a dead woman. Get to hold that scepter out. It's the type of thing he's talking about here. See, there are some things I know that are gained, I think, in a democracy. I, I, I think. I'm not, I'm not an authority on this, really. There are some things that are gained, but some things that are lost. People don't know what a kingdom is, and the Bible's all about a kingdom. And in a kingdom, the people own nothing. Where our good brother... Larry Jamo lives in Burkina Faso. That is a kingdom. So the people don't own anything. The government owns it all and gives certain things to certain people. And at their discretion, they take it back. And in a kingdom, the people are owned by the king. So you can't get that out of a democracy. We said government by the people, for the people, but it sounds so good. You know? But this isn't how God, this isn't the way it is in the kingdom we're in Christ. The government is not by the people, for the people, of the It's not. You belong to God. He purchased you. you. What you have, you have from God, and it belongs to God. And if you're not a steward of it, he takes it back. See, that's the way it is in the kingdom of God. But that uh, it sounds like political heresy, you know. <laughs> you say it today, so you always got to make sure you tell people this is the kingdom of God that we're talking about. <laughs> now, talk about the governments of men, because you'll have the IRS people on your doorstep the next day. But if you see this, there'll not be an ambassador from heaven camping on your step to see how come you found this out. There'll be things coming from heaven to you. These are things. See, when you know the secrets of the kingdom, it gives you an advantage. When you know the secrets of the earthly kingdom, you gotta, you got to keep it quiet. This is sealed stuff. You don't, don't let this out. Paul's letting it out now. Amen. It, isn't, this part, isn't this part of fellowship with God? <laughs> yes, you know, it is. Part of the giving and receiving? Yes, 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 it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Boldness and access, that, that's right. Now, Paul, there are several prayers recorded in Scripture, and we have the privilege of reading them, praying for the churches. And they're totally unlike what most church people are accustomed to. You, you could read them at your age. You surely know them by now anyway. Ephesians 1, 15 through 19, and the third chapter, 15 through 20, and Colossians 1, 1 through 9, and Philippians 1, 9, in Thessalonians 5, 23, he says, I pray, I pray. But what he prays, yeah. Yeah. it's not like, uh -huh. I know things are pretty tough down there, so I'm praying for you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't read prayers like this. Yeah, right. I, don't, I don't think there's any, as a matter of fact. I'm cautious about saying this, but I don't think there's any prayers like this. Other than John says, I my desire is that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Of course, most people would die if that, you know. <laughs> you said to someone, if you had the power now, you say, now may you prosper and be in health as your soul prosper. A lot of people just keel over dead right there. That'd be, that'd be it. So they pray different. <coughs> Bones and access have to do with approaching God. Confidence has to do with the assurance that you'll be heard. Now, this is something we have in Christ. Whether we exploit it or not, whether we walk in it or not, that's, that's another matter. But, you, but it's, it's there and it's possible. You just have to walk in the Spirit and live by faith. You, you have to walk in the territory where these things are realized. Amen. Really good? These, um, if you're going to be a king and a priest under God, these things are absolute necessities. 
If you're going to be coming yeah, before right. the throne and interceding on something that you've yeah. been seeing, you're going to have to have these things in order to get that done. Yeah. Now, most most people who are serious in their walk for God have recognized that there's a kind of a deterioration that's happened in Christianity, and it's a, and it's accelerating. So that Christians of this century do not bear any remote resemblance to Christians just like two, three decades ago. It's not that, and they weren't, these weren't like ideal. These weren't spiritual supermen back here. Everybody thought they were weak back there. <laughs> you know, Constant uh, Augustine, the fourth century, he had some great insights into the kingdom of God. He was concerned when circuses were introduced. Made a big writing about it. Because it was an appeal to entertainment. Well, I don't know what he'd say today. That's how concerned they were. The Shakers, who are akin to like Mennonite or Quaker, or that sort of people. When time was created by big tools, when tools created a lot of time and the Industrial Revolution created a lot of time, the entertainment industry went way, yeah. and people were set back. Yeah. The Shakers, they didn't buy into the Industrial Revolution. The Shakers made tools that were advanced in their time so that they wouldn't have to spend so much time in the field and they could spend more time in the Word. Said so my grandfather was a boy. They got up at four o'clock, ate a hefty breakfast of steak, potatoes, and so forth. Went out and worked for a couple hours. Come in and ate breakfast, and then worked. And when they got done working, they come home and went to bed. They didn't have any time. Yeah, amen. So the Shakers saw let's to make more time, so we don't have to, so we can spend more time in the Word. But the world at large spent more time for themselves. <laughs> See, there's been a deterioration. But what if the church had been praying like they are prayed in the Scripture? What if prayers like that had been uttered? And when people started to see deterioration, they started to pray, allow the eyes of their understanding being open. God might show them what the good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. He may be perfect in the entire wanting nothing. What if they begin praying like that? See? That's how Paul is praying now. Amen. Brother, could you make a comment that someone might ask? If these things are guaranteed, why do we need to pray about them? Why do we need to pray for them? All right, because the thing that glorifies God is not their existence, it's their appropriation. Amen. And the thing that glorifies God in their appropriation is that God is active. In the, in the appropriation. That's why it's given this way. So as the person appropriates them, God is working with the person, and that's the part that glorifies God. That's where he gets the glory. That's right, fellowship with God. Also, the master did say, seek, ask, and knock. That's right. That's the means, see, because that... That's the way he gets glory. Yeah, yes. God, God working in the inv individual to actually make them willing to, to uh, do the same thing. That's, that's, that's right. what the glory is seen. That these creatures who were at one time not willing at all, they're now they're going to be willing in the day of his power. Amen. And working out of that, God working in men. That's the, the glory of it. See, under the law, Moses was, you ought, you ought, you ought, you better, you better, you better. If you don't, that's how the law was. Just do and live. But it's different in Christ. Mm -hmm. The in inhibition in Christ is your will. That's the inhibition. Yeah. What, you, what you have an appetite for. Mm -hmm. If it's not for the things of God, that's what inhibits you. Mm -hmm. See? So in, these, in this doctrine, he's wetting your appetite for the working of God. He keeps telling us about what God's doing, what God's doing, and so forth. That's what sort of makes you thirsty for God to do something in you. Okay. Now he says we have access, we have boldness. That's not brashness, you understand. It, 
it takes a lot of boldness just to come into the presence of God. It, yeah, right. Boldness and confidence by the faith of him. Well, that's an interesting phrase. By the faith of mm -hmm. him. Now, as usual, the plethora of translations have presented all kinds of different views of this. So the New Revised Standard Version says, through our faith in him. Remember, the phrase is the, the faith of him. Uh -huh. So that says it, it means our faith in him. The Jewish Bible says through his faithfulness. So that's a completely different idea. Darby's translation, do eight translations, says, by the faith of him, just like our text says. English Revised Version says, through our faith in him. Good News Bible says, through faith in Christ. The Net Bible says, through Christ, because of Christ's faithfulness. By faith in him, that's both the Bishop's Bible and Tyndale. By faith on him, through the faith of him, the belief of his apostolic Bible. It's through Jesus believing and through his faith. All right, now what does it mean? You got a variety of. <laughs> One is that his faith means his faithfulness. In other words, that it's Christ's personal faith, which he doesn't have faith now. Yeah. He lived by faith in heaven, so that, that's absurd. Because he doesn't, Jesus isn't living by faith now. He lived by faith, and yeah. when he's in the world, it says, in him will I trust. Yeah. So he trusted in God when he was on earth. The idea here is of refers to source, yeah. not, yeah. it's like this is the house of the Blakeleys means this is our house. And if he were a builder, this is the house of so-and-so builder. He built the house. It's, it's a source. Of means the source, where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Grammatically, it's plain even grammatically. In whom, notice we have faith of him. Text says, we, we, have boldness and confidence through the faith of him, yeah. not through the faith of us, the faith of him. So the him goes back, it's the whom. Mm -hmm. It's the whom. It's, it's the faith that comes from him. Amen. That's what gives us the access uh, to God. So the text is not referring to Christ's own faith. There are some people that teach something like this. They say that when Jesus came to earth, he was obedient and kept the law, lived by faith, and because he did, we get the credit for his life. That's the teaching. This is not so. This isn't the case. Jesus being holy wasn't for you. It was for, it was for God. This is what made him a suitable sacrifice to God. Jesus had to be perfectly obedient so he could be the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. It wasn't so his obedience could be transferred to you. <laughs> No, that's not, that's not true. It's God's own righteousness that is given to you. Mm -hmm. Not Christ's righteousness. God's righteousness Amen. is given to you. Amen. Now, Jesus, he is the, he's the administrator of faith. Amen. Now, he's called, in Hebrews 12, to the author and the finisher of our faith. That's of faith. That's, that's just another way of saying of, of faith, the faith of him. So there's different kinds of faith. Some faith, legitimate faith, comes from Christ. It comes by hearing. And after it has come, we're no longer under the schoolmaster, as Galatians 3 says. So faith comes from Christ, who's the administrator of it, Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this is grand to think about that Jesus is the administrator of the faith. If you can get what Jesus gives, you'll get where Jesus is. Yeah. Right. 
Now this ought to make perfect sense sense to us because what kind of human capacity is there that would enable you to have the faith that's described in Scripture? Like seeing him as invisible. See, faith deals with things that are not from the earth order. That's right. They're not from anything that humanity is associated with. Everything connected with salvation has to do with another realm. Yeah. It blends with eternity. And you do not have any natural capacities that gives you access to eternal realities. You, just bald reasoning ought to bring people to this conclusion. This is, this is the way it actually is. So the scripture says that we obtained like precious faith. 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1. Or he says it was given to you to believe, Philippians 1.29. Faith came to us through the faculty of hearing, but it was supplied to us by grace, and the grace of God was exceeding abundant with faith yeah. and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That's 1 Timothy 1.14. Now the same kind of expression, faith of him, is found in at least two other places. Here's Galatians 2.16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works, not by the works, not by our works. Again, Paul said, I want to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God, that is from God, by faith. So the various translations of these verses are the, are the same as the other. They look at it different ways. But this is what it's talking about. There's a, you can't be saved by something that you have by nature mm -hmm. taking hold of something that comes from God. Right. You've got, that's why you have to be born again. You have to be born again. You have to have new capacities, new abilities, because God's going to give you things that are not going to pass away when the world passes away. The world's going to pass away. So whatever you get from God, it's got to be something that doesn't pass away. Amen. It's got to transfer to the next world. Yeah. Amen. Or you have to have a God-given yeah. aptitude. To lay hold of that. Well, that, that, that shouldn't be difficult for yeah. anyone to see. But given that he, he shows the exclusiveness of faith when he says, not all men have it. That's right. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> now, in addition to these things, we, ha we have boldness and access. Mm -hmm. That is, it's legal and right for us to come to God in Christ. Mm -hmm. It's, it's wrong and impossible outside of Christ. We have both an access with confidence. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is, there's sureness mm -hmm. and uh, positiveness connected with faith. There's no doubt in faith. There's no question in faith. It, once a person has faith, there's no question about what God has given at all. He mm -hmm. just sees it. If it does, if appearance seems not to justify the conclusion, then he said, well, it's going to be then. Yeah, it's right. going to eventually be mine. Like Abraham walked in the promised lands in a strange land, but by faith he knew it's going to be, it's going to be mine. Amen. Eventually it's going to be mine. Amen. So a man is depicted by nature as not having this ability there outside the realm of nature. Now, uh, just a personal question. Um, how satisfied are you with your level of confidence? I mean, I'm not asking for an answer. I'm just He says if we ask anything according to his will, we know we have the petition. See, so I doubt that any of us will say, well, I, well, I mastered that. What do you got next? Now, in other words, this is something that you can have it today and lose it tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Rob, maybe you've experienced this. Been a, there's been a few times in my life where I've had this confidence I just knew. I could count them. They're that, they're that rare. I could just count them. Most of the time, that's not the case. I'm asking. I'm, I'm asking from a different, different vantage point. But if you... Redemption, salvation allows for a person to be close enough to God and have enough to God that he can just say to a mountain, be gone. That's what Jesus said. You say, are you saying that... No, I haven't moved any mountains. But it's not because that word isn't true. Because yeah, right. I haven't got where that word tells you to be. And I'm not sure God lets just anybody get there. I'm not sure God lets you be there till you're targeting doing what God's ordained you to do. Right. Now, if you have, yeah, if you're walking in the center of God's will, now you'll be able to do things yeah. nobody else could do. Like you could... Uh, be on a ship that's 14 days in the sea, breaking apart, going down, and God will give you the, you'll be the shipmaster. God will give you charge of the ship. You'll be able to tell them what to do so everybody can get off, and you may have to swim a little distance or carry us right on a board, but everybody's going to be saved. See, but Paul, he didn't the next day publish in the newspaper, uh, Master of Shipwrecks, I'll be glad to be your captain. I can carry you through. Serious shit storm. This was for the time that was needed. Now, brethren, there's a lot of people that fail tests because when they get to them, they weren't ready. They were in a, they were too far from God. So when the test came, they fell flat on their face. They didn't take and redemption now makes provision. For you to be ready for what Paul calls the evil day. Yeah. Satan has sometimes an evil day when he just throws everything at you. Mm -hmm. Now, how can you stand in that day if, if you've taken advantage of this boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him? You'll be able to stand. Amen. Yes, Brother Tony. There's got to be an obstacle in the way of the kingdom progress. That's right. There's got to be something like mm -hmm. that. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's impossible to move, but you've got boldness and action. God doesn't, nothing's impossible with God. God doesn't have difficulties, not God. And he'll work his power for you if you're where he wants you. Paul encountered for Jesus. Yes, yes. You're going to be blind for a time. Yes. And he was. And he was. That's right. He was where God wanted, that had to be done. Not just to punish Bar Jesus, but for the proconsul's sake. Remember when he saw that, he, he believed in the Lord. Mm -hmm. When he saw that, yeah. and that is the only time we know of anything. That's like right. That. Now, now the thirteenth verse. This is a dumbfounding verse. Wherefore, didn't view what we <laughs> view what we just read. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you. Which is your glory? Wherefore, the verse, other verse, read. Therefore, that's in view of what I said, or I ask you. Therefore, in view of what I just said, or I pray. Therefore, in view of what you said, or that, that's the reason. That, for this is this for this reason is my prayer. You won't uh, you won't faint at my not faint at your tribulation. <laughs> it would make perfect sense if some if you said. I'm praying that you won't faint at your tribulations. Well, that's not what he says. Yeah. You don't faint at my tribulations, he says. See, he knows that it may appear, he's writing from jail. Mm -hmm. So he knows it might appear as to all this that he's saying, his circumstance contradicts that. Yeah. Doesn't look like, well, Paul, why aren't you praying to get out of prison so you could come back here and tell this to us personally? Huh? He knows that. He's told him the greatness of the power that's toward us that believes. Him. How come the power's not working for you? How come you don't use that power to get out of there? Because the power wasn't designed to get him out. It was designed to keep him safe in it. See, God's power is designed for God's purpose, not for man's. 
is not to get you out of a dilemma, it's to keep you in a dilemma. Amen. That's what glorifies yeah. God. And another, and another epistle, Paul, didn't Paul write that um, there were certain brethren that because of his bonds, they preached the word oh, yes. uh, more boldly because of yes. his tribulations? He took confidence by yeah, it, yeah, confidence. by his bonds. Waxing confidence, yeah. he said, mm -hmm. amen. Now, I desire you faint not. See, there is a condition where you faint. That means you you run out of run out of gas. You get weak. You give up. Disappointed. What's the use? Lose heart. I don't want you to lose heart. Discouraged people are hard people to encourage. Or have you ever tried to encourage someone who's discouraged? You find, you, you find out it takes a lot of power to do this. Because discouragement like beats the people down. People aren't being told, I'm convinced of this, that people aren't being told, church people aren't being told that if you walk close to God, he'll sustain you in your trouble. So they're not be so they're, they're, when everything's going well, they think, well, they, they don't think about this. They don't think about getting some power and so forth for, the, for that time. So when the time comes, they fail. And sometimes they do because of what come on other people. I told you, I think, several times, probably several times now, that when my wife died, one of the key members in our fellowship and the family quit and went back to the world because they didn't think it was right for God to take my wife. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Brother Bob knows the people. Dan Stoner's, Al Stoner's brother. Yes, he fainted at my tribulation. <laughs> my tribulation. Paul doesn't want that to happen, see, at the Amen. church at Ephesus. My sufferings for you. You might remember that one time when he was at Ephesus, he suffered. Remember that, those silversmiths mm -hmm. opposed him and he had to be taken, rushed away. Remember that? He, so the Ephesians, he's with him, I say, see, if we, we had only been more alert, if we only had been more alert, this might not have happened. If, if we'd have been more perceptive of what was going on, it's all our fault. That's why it happened. That's Satan trying to get people to think that now. Someone in the family falls away. Yeah. Having experienced this, I know, Satan will say, if you'd only done this, right. that wouldn't have happened. If he'd only done that, mm -hmm. yeah. that wouldn't have happened. Oh, yeah. Satan's an expert at doing this. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you can find an answer to it, if you, in our case, we had, uh, we had eight children that didn't, nine children that didn't fall away. So we could present, well, if, this was, if the fault was us, then how come all of them didn't fall away? <laughs> right? That doesn't make it that doesn't make it any more palatable. I understand that, but it does keep you from fainting. Yes, amen. It does keep you from fainting. Faint my tribulations for you. Now he's in a position because of his preaching. His preaching is what got him in this position. Here's his preaching. Now Jesus told his apostles and followers. He prepared them for suffering. It's not going to be a bed of roses. You want to follow me, it's not going to be a bed of roses. Your name and lights and all this, this, this is the way it's going to be. Here's some things he told them. In the world, you will have tribulation. We armed them for this, see? And Paul said, all that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Lays it right out to you. That's the way it is. So if you're not suffering persecution, then you got to ask, am I living God, lads? you got to ask the question. And John said, marvel not, brethren, marvel not if the world hates you. Don't, <laughs> don't marvel at that. See, if believers have a wrong view of suffering, it'll be a detriment. It'll, it'll set them back. It'll momentarily take their eyes off the goal and they'll try and figure out why is my brother experiencing these things? And it sets you back. Because all the way through the race, you've got to keep your eye on Christ. You can't be 
looking at your brother, even if he's afflicted, mm -hmm. or looking at yourself if you're afflicted, you you can't do it. You got to keep your eye on Christ, looking unto Christ. Mm -hmm. So Paul is so concerned. He knows he knows they love him down there in Ephesus. It wasn't like Galatia and Corinth where they didn't think he was an apostle. He knew they loved him. He knew they cared for him. But he wants to tell him, listen, everything's everything's under control here. I'm in the will of God. Don't don't be overcome because of my afflictions. You can imagine the word comes. Well, what if the word comes back to us? One of our brethren goes over to a foreign country and they're incarcerated and suffering. This has an effect mm -hmm. yeah. on us. But see, faith is equal to this. Amen. Amen. Instead of fainting, remember, you have boldness mm -hmm. and access with confidence. Yeah. See, so lay, lay it alongside of that. So you Ephesians, instead of fainting okay. at my adversity... How about using this boldness yeah. and access with confidence you have and pray about this yeah. that it'll be read down to God's glory. Amen. Then he adds these, this closing phrase, which is your glory. Mm -hmm. Paul's sufferings <laughs> was their glory. Yeah, see, that's not how the world thinks. In other words, he had to suffer so they could get what they got. Yeah. Your glory. You got things because of my suffering. Yeah. Well, you did too. If you can see it, mm -hmm. a lot of things you've received from the Lord, some other people had to go through knot holes so you could get it uh -huh. and suffer. That's the way the kingdom works. But it's all worked together for good. So Paul doesn't say, don't say, well, thank God, at least it didn't happen to us. No, I don't think Pray the will of the Lord be done. Pray that the word of God might run and have free course. Pray, pray, pray that. Pray that we might be kept from evil men. The evil men might not have their way against us. He, that's how you, How can you do that? You've got access and boldness with confidence. Yeah. I think I'll close there, but it, it, that's a great text, isn't it? Amen. And this, uh, I think we can improve in this area here. In our prayers, we can improve on this. We certainly have a lot of resources. Yes, amen. And it's not uh, common for this to do. To, but, but the kingdom doesn't have to be set back because everybody doesn't know all these things. If just a nucleus of people know them. If just David knows, that's enough. Mm -hmm. That's enough to defeat the Philistines. huh? Right. So if in all the world... if we're, we're not the only ones that know, I understand that. But if in all the world we were the only ones that knew this, it'd be just as potent as if the whole world knew it. <laughs> all right, any rest of you have something you'd like to add? Yeah, sometimes um, when you love somebody, it's harder to see them go through trouble <laughs> yeah. than if you had to go yeah. through it yourself. Oh, yeah. Because I think a lot of times you know if you're going through trouble, you can still examine yourself and you know you're walking by faith and you know that it's just it's something. But it's hard when you see somebody else, you, you almost like want to take it off of them. But this is not your kingdom. Yeah. This is God's kingdom. Right. And, and so you have to believe that God's working something in that person. And, and the, you know, going through trouble is, is hard enough. But you, you got to be, there's a sense in which hope saves you because you're looking for something that, you're looking for the result of the trouble. Yeah. What it's going to do rather than just focusing on the, the here and now. And the, the, I mean, I'm, we're not pretending that there's not trouble. And it's very painful trouble. Oh, yeah. and it can be very hurtful at the moment. But it's what's going to produce in you that's um, it's worth the trouble. Amen. Brother Gibbon. Mm-hmm. About this, uh, we were talking earlier about faith and um, being able to move mountains. I, I've thought about this because of um, some teachings will say if you have, if if you just had enough faith, you could do this, 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 and then you see in their lives they're not doing any of what they're saying. But I, I so I thought about this especially because I have some family members that continue to talk about these type of things, and I thought about how Jesus Christ. He didn't just run around throwing mountains all over the place. Although he had the power to do that, but he said he only did the will of the Father. Yeah. And this is this is what when you when you are uh, 
able to do those things is because you're walking by faith and doing only the will of the Father. Yeah. And and it's everything is orderly and it's it's done according to um, His purpose and what He is doing, not because of what something that we want or ha desire in this world. It's because of what the Lord's doing that lines up with what He's going to be doing for eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I also thought about that with this uh, with this um, fainting. It's someone who faints is because they're, they're not walking close with the Lord. Yes. If they are, if they're walking close to the Lord, they'll see things rightly. Amen. Mr. Barb? I was considering what Brother Gene brought out about the praying and why we would pray for something that is already guaranteed. First of all, the Lord said, I will yet be inquired. Yes, um, right. Amen. He promised his people. But then he said, I want them to ask for it. We're, we're joining in his labors, mm -hmm. putting our hand to the plow. And when we consider any type of investment, even here in the earth, we consider what's going to give our efforts the, the best return, mm -hmm. what's going to be the most productive, the most fruitful. And this is an area where we're going to be very fruitful when we when we labor together with the Lord in prayer concerning the things He's already guaranteed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Which are a lot. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So I was thinking about your statement about Paul being in the will of God, yeah. even though he was in Rome under house arrest. But the record says that he was preaching the kingdom of God and teaching That's those right. things concerning the Lord Jesus That's Christ right. with all confidence. Mm -hmm. No man for That's right. Yeah. He was actually yeah. protected. It was a yeah, more protective right. environment. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Mr. Annie? Um, you have to believe God's word to see. Oh, Hannah, okay. Say it again. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to believe. God's word to see. That's right. Amen. Amen. Brother Ricky. Thank you for your clarification of the faith of him, him being the source. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because I was led to believe growing up that faith is our part in the sense of we yeah. just look at the facts and we come to a reasonable conclusion. Yeah. And, yeah. and thus our response is the product of what we've done. Mm -hmm. When yeah. rather... Faith makes even what we do become the product of what He does in us. That's right. Amen. Amen. So we, we continue yes. to be the workmanship of God even under this banner that we might call faith. Because He's the one who has, who has given it. Amen. So even our believing is the product of that faith. See, that's so encouraging because the Father only receives what Jesus produces. Amen. Mm -hmm. that's right. If you produce it on your own, God is going to reject it. That's right. But, so but the it's faith produced is... through Christ. So then the faith becomes the appointed means through which Jesus works. That's right. Because it's got, it can't be a fly-by-night faith. Then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it guarantees God's success in us. That's right. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. As our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the arrangement it is made in Christ Jesus, the redemption is in Christ Jesus, that by the faith of him we have boldness and access with confidence. We pray, Lord, you'd direct us and empower us to have an even greater experience in this matter of coming to you with boldness, knowing we have access, doing so with great confidence. In Jesus' name, amen.